Greetings, unsettled souls! Welcome to The Correct Views. I'm Sam I.B. DeGangie doing political commentary for the Media Speaks. You might know me from Teddy Stick. The band Passing Time that you just heard. Uh, going through some changes on that one. Um, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. I want to remind everyone uh, as you trickle in here to hit subscribe and hit share. And I remind everybody that uh, YouTube has been demonetizing our videos. By us, I mean anybody who's not a raging socialist. And uh, we make nothing now from YouTube. We make pretty much what you give us. And that's it, friends. You can donate at the correct views at hotmail.com. Do it through PayPal. That's all I'm going to say about it, guys. I could really use the help. All right, guys, check this out. Reuters, North Korea fires multiple short-range projectiles into the sea. Now, this just broke. I mean, like, just broke before I went on. And uh, if you go to Teddy Stick, you'll find that I cover the uh, North Korean crisis. I have been since day one. I probably have 30 or more articles up about it. And uh, it boils down to this. On one hand, you have... China and North Korea wanting the war gaming and the war drills that are happening currently until the end of the month that happen every year. They want them to stop because North Korea feels that it is a sign that they're going to be invaded. Trouble is, we have to be able to trust China and North Korea. If Donald Trump goes in here and makes this deal, but we're not going to do this drill anymore. What assurances do we have that the insanity that's coming out of North Korea is actually going to end? That there is the question that you need to ask yourself. So anyway, that's led us up to where we are now. So let's take a look at what the uh, mad cheese eater who abuses his own people like Adolf Hitler did. I, I t detest this man. So, uh, North Korea, early on Saturday, fired several short-range projectiles into the sea off the east coast from its eastern uh, Kwangwon province, South Korea's military said. Keep in mind, it's 9.15. It's still Friday here. But again, we're talking about the Asian countries. See, I, we were so fast at the correct views that I can give you tomorrow's news. Did you see it? Look right there. It's, it's super proof. The South Korean Office of a Joint Chief Staff said on the, blah, blah, said the projectiles flew in a northeasterly direction about 155 miles, 250 kilometers into the sea. Earlier, South Korea's Yonhap News Agency said a ballistic missile may have been fired without citing a source. Japan's NHK newscast said the projectiles did not appear to be objects that could threaten Japan's safety. The launch is the first by the North since it test-fired a missile on July 28th. Now, if it wasn't a threat to Japan, then it's very likely something that they had hovering around here. How do I want to say this? To, to get it, Japan is further away, obviously. South Korea... I think they wanted to have a presence there. They wanted something that would launch in order where they could say, hey, look, we're able to do this. Aren't we, aren't we threatening? Get out of our area. Take that, I mean, literally at what you wish, but th that's where it is right now. We don't know what he fired into the ocean. I'm sure it'll be coming up. But um, uh, Trump scored an amazing win when he got Kim Jong-un to back off a couple of weeks ago. And the media completely overlooked it as they do everything the man does, right? But, uh, I don't know, friends. I don't like to see him still launching things like this because sooner or later the U.S. is going to act because their, their, their interests at this point are in jeopardy, regardless of what you think of Mr. Trump. I mean, he hasn't started this fight. This has clearly been something that North Korea has started. Yeah, we shouldn't be drilling there. Uh, war drilling, I mean. But that said, you don't risk you, nuclear war over a drill. China and North Korea could have their own drills near South Korea and tell them, hey, you did it to us. Now, that would be a reply. It probably wouldn't do much for world peace, but that would be a reply. Uh, certainly a much better reply, I would say, than we're going to send nukes to Los Angeles. All right, friends, moving on. I wrote this one for the Teddy Stick. It's what I do for a living. I'm a journalist. Uh, Mexico issues 
national emergency in five states as radioactive material stolen just south of the border. Um, I don't know if a lot of you know what a dirty bomb is. Those of you that watch the massive Fukushima update, I love you. Those of you that watch that know that a dirty bomb is, is different from a conventional nuclear weapon. What they do is they pretty much take a grenade or any kind of explosive. It could be a firecracker. And if you put plutonium on it or something like that and detonate it, it can not only harm a lot of people or in the short term, but it could give a very large number of people cancer in the long run. Aside from that, it could absolutely poison an area. And we know from Fukushima that our authorities are not going to be honest with us about it if it was to happen. That's a really big problem. Well, listen to this. It's not good. In Brazil, the Agiona radioactive disaster is one of the worst nuclear tragedies in history. How many of you know about this? I wrote, a few have been heard the sad tale. A few scrape, uh, scrappers accidentally got their hands on an x-ray light machine and even played in the actual glowing poison of cesium-137. Some deadly material came in contact with food and a girl was even buried in a lead-lined coffin as locals protested it, fearing that she was so radiated that it can, can't contaminate the groundwater. Pause. This was not a weapon. It was a radioactive machine for x-rays and th things of that nature. Nuclear medicine, probably. Lead-lined coffin, whole city, whole town worried. What did they take here? America and Mexico faced the same outcome as, th as thieves stolen from the unknown amount of highly toxic radioactive material and caused an alert in five Mexican states, Reuters reports. The head of the National Agency Services on Wednesday put the alert into effect. The search is to cover the northern states of Nuevo León, uh, Tem Tamaulipas, San Luis Potosi, Zac uh, Zacatecas and uh, Calahuluya, uh, my Spanish is wonderful, isn't it, informs uh, Luis Felipe Puente via his Twitter page. Now that I've butchered the Spanish language, I'll go on. Those with any information about the heist are to contact authorities. Uh, Puerto has, also states, even being close to certain radionucleides can be enough to sicken a person for life or even kill someone. Due to this, no one, I wrote, is to open the container that was boosted... <coughs> from an engineering school in Nuevo León. Reuters closes the article by cryptic, cryptically admitting stolen or lost radioactive material has on several occasions been reported in Mexico, most recently in April. We've talked about this on the show. This means that this could, be, this could end like Brazil, if we are lucky. If not, then this could be ISIS, or any other person who's bent on bringing the ultimate terror on innocence. People think of nuclear bombs and images of mushroom clouds appear in the mind's eye. This is not always the case, and it need not be the case, to kill or forever sicken countless others. Just a sprinkling of things, like one cesium-137, onto even an easy-to-make explosive that one can find instructions to on the internet could cause a horrible outcome. And again, there's nothing wrong with looking up how to build a recreational explosives. People do it all the time. Nobody would ever expect it to be, you know, connected to radioactive poison. This is hard to accomplish safely, but then again, is ISIS or most suicide bombers worried about that? If one is willing to be exposed, making a bomb is as easy as breathing. And you don't want to lose track of that at all, my friends, because we're entering really spooky times right now, but let's face it. If they could irradiate themselves and die to kill or sicken God only knows how many Americans with a glorified firecracker, they're going to do it. So they'll poison themselves just like they would blow themselves up. And that's, that's where we are, friends. I got a, uh, just a couple more stories to get to here. NASA is hiring someone to protect the Earth from aliens. Now... Before you guys start giving me fake news, fake news, word of the day, by the way, words of the day, fake news, put fake news in the comment line, 
uh, send your address to the correct views on hotmail.com and type word of the day in the comment line. Fake news. I'll send you something. NASA is hiring someone to protect the Earth from aliens. It's not fake news. It's MSN, Microsoft. Um, this is really happening. Now, before I get into this, let's ask the obvious question. Are we going to be seeing aliens? Or are we going to be seeing the government or the UN or whatever body wants to control us with their aliens? You know what I mean. Just gadgets and things that we fall for that we may not have even known existed. We heard about this when the stealth bomber came out, so don't act like it can't happen. Now, before I get all the people on here that believe in aliens freaking out on me, do I believe in aliens? Yeah. I also believe in demons, and I don't know how you would tell them apart. For those of you that aren't religious, yeah, I, I believe in aliens, but I don't believe in government honesty. I, I don't believe, or I, I'd be hesitant to believe any aliens that were presented to me from CNN. Um, you know, when we see them, we talk to them, or whatever, they shoot at us. <laughs> but anyway, this is really happening, listen to this. Want to save the planet Earth? You could apply for NASA's Planetary Protection Officer role. The National Aeronautics and Space Administration is currently looking for someone with a secret security clearance to ensure alien life or organic constituent and biological contamination doesn't make its way in a spaceship. Now, I don't know how many of you have seen War of the Worlds, but this is uh, the general scenario here, and it, it could very well happen. The common cold on planet boobly boo that something comes from could wipe out the entire human race, or at least most of it until our bodies thought it, if it could. Um, things that are created, like many of the diseases we see that we have created or mutated, uh, God only knows what they would do if let loose. You want an example? Okay. Remember smallpox uh, almost wiped out did wipe out certain whole tribes of Indians, Native American Indians, because they were not able to fight smallpox. So they're saying that if something did come from outer space and it was a germ, if it was completely alien to life as we know it, we could be hit like uh, Texas is getting it from the hurricane right now. All right, guys, um, a prayer is with them for sure. More on that, this uh, MSN article says, this person is responsible for the leadership of NASA's planetary protection capability, maintenance of planetary protection policies, and oversight of their implementation by NASA's space flight missions, according to the job listing. Well, I, I got press passes. I've been cleared by Secret Service. I don't think I have secret security clearance, but hey, I'm willing to save the world if they give it to me. Just saying. Candidates must have advanced knowledge of planetary protection, experience overseeing nationally significant space programs, and have demonstrated skills in diplomacy that resulted in win-win solutions during extremely difficult and complex multilateral discussion. After all, protecting the planet is sure to present challenges. There's got to be like four people in the world that are qualified for it. They should have just called them on the phone. Requirements include frequent travel or could business trips include intergalactic travel. Men in black, is that you? Where there's lots of responsibility for one person, which is why the job comes with a six-figure income. Pay $124,406 up to $187,000. Thanks for keeping us safe now. So they wrote. All right, friends, we got uh, two more to get to. And as I do, I want to invite you to look at my screen because that is the Seacrest Motel. Now, I don't know how many of you have been to the Seacrest Motel before. I've been telling you forever that you want to go, that you're going to have the time of your life. I hope you believe me, because those of you that have stayed there already know you've saved an absolute fortune by doing this. How can you save money? By going there and telling them that you heard about it, the Seacrest Motel, on the correct views. And what they will do is give you an amazing price on your room, because you're a listener to the show. You have good taste, put it that way, and uh, you will be treated quite kindly. You'll be talking to Vicky, and uh, they'll be setting you up with the best room possible. I had him record it on the phone that I was going to play, but for some reason he seems to be absolutely missing. 
But make sure you go tell them, hey, I heard about it on the correct views. You see that? I'm going to stay in that room right there, and uh, you will. There is no people of color on Forbes' highest paying actress list, and it's not surprising, says the USA Today. All right, look. I'm going to ask a very unpolitically correct question here, but it's true. If there are very few number of women of color on the top actress list, and it's such a huge problem, then it is also a huge problem that almost everybody on the radio and in the music industry is currently black, or of color, minority, I should say. Do I care? No, not in the least. I don't care what color you are. But I'm not the one that wrote this stupid-ass article, either. Thankfully. Um, I write my own stupid-ass articles. No, I'm kidding. Um, this is, this is ridiculous. Why is everything filtered through race now? Do you know how much hate I'll probably get for bringing up the question that I brought up, but it's true? Most of the music industry today is minority. You don't see them writing articles like this asking where the white people are. Why? Because maybe it shouldn't matter. But that you can't say that today. Because you got white privilege. The only privilege you have is not to be on the radio. That's like saying you have black privilege in the movies when you're not in them. What do I think needs to happen? I think we need to forget about color and base people on whether they can act or sing, play their instrument or whatever, which is more important, I would think, in the long run. Is it just me? Hollywood still has some work to do on creating space for people of color. Yeah. For, tell that to Samuel L. Jackson. Forbes released its annual list of highest paid actresses Wednesday, and not a single person made the top ten cut for 2017. Maybe that's because black people are always cast by the companies as stereotypical black people. It'd be like casting me as a trailer park dude with a, a straw hanging out of my mouth, something that I'm nothing like. Why did they give the girl from Ghostbusters, who Milo correctly called one of the worst movies of all time, why did they give her a character that was so typically stereo, so stereotypical, and then wondered why it didn't do well? Queen Latifah certainly makes a lot of money. Do you know why? Because she's talented, that's why. She can do comedy, she can do serious. She had the highest grossing movie, I think, in America last week or something like it, but not a, you wouldn't hear about that on USA Today. Emma Stone brought in $26 million for her leading role in La La Land, and other actresses also saw major dollars from their work this year, including Mila Kunis, uh, Emma Watson. Emma Watson did a great job in Beauty and the Beast. Leave her be. <coughs> but there have historically been few roles for women of color in Hollywood, particularly in blockbuster superhero flicks and Disney productions. Back to the color again. Never mind the fact that half of what Disney's, Disney's been releasing lately is... Mm, would it help them to be in a movie that wasn't any good? I can't even believe we're having this discussion. Anyway, in USA Today's uh, 2016 diversity report, we found fewer opportunities for female minority actors, directors, and black, Hispanic, and Asian performers to earn Oscar nominations. There are fewer of them. That's why they're called minorities. Look, friends, I'm done with this piece. Let's just look at it this way. The sooner we get around to judging people, based on how they do their job. Instead of writing articles about what color somebody is while they're doing their job, I think we'll be better off. My wife's addicted to the Beauty and the Beast movie. She took me to see it twice. You know what? Emma Watson did a great job. It doesn't matter what color she is. I'm just tired of hearing about it, friends. All right, guys, listen to this. What's that? The Dumdy of the Day, that's what that is. Dumdy, Dumdy, Dumdy of the Day. 73-year-old woman raided as police officers storm in to steal her criminal dog. It's a Yorkshire. I'm not kidding. I wrote this for Teddy Stick, and uh, it's, 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 it's sourced through the Daily Mail. I didn't just make it up here. Listen to this.
This is ridiculous. Look at this deadly dog here. Take a good look. You'll love this. It's priceless. Seven police storm you see that? Seventy-three year olds house to Caesar. That there is a deadly, deadly dog. Look at that. <laughs> Utterly terrifying. Listen to this. One of the many things that President Donald Trump has spoken about, the one that rings most true with the most people, has to be the topic of government waste. From the smallest of towns to the largest of cities, I wrote, waste is as common as summer nights in green grass. Sadly, the situation does not seem to be any better in London, England. This we see clearly in a new article posted by the Daily Mail, which shows that no less than seven officers stormed a 73-year-old woman's house and seized her dangerous 10-year-old Yorkshire Terrier Alfie. When the little yippy dog chased a delivery man, it took all seven police officers to steal the lady's criminal dog. She suffers from anxiety. It's like all she has in the world. Officers arrived in five cars last Friday to take Claudia Settimo Bovio's little dog away. I come for your little dog, too. The officers managed to keep a straight face, much less be able to sleep at night after this is unknown. How, we'll never figure out. I was treated like a criminal, and I'm not, said Alfie's owner. My dog is not vicious. He's not a Rottweiler. He's a little Yorkshire Terrier. I live on my own, and he's very protective of me. He just likes to chase. Show me a dog who doesn't like to chase, she asked. And she said it. Officers are claiming that reports had said that the dog was possibly a border collie the si or similar size. So I ask, if it had been true, that required seven officers for a border collie in a grandmother's house. No wonder ISIS is having a field day over there. Of the tiny dog, the elderly woman said Alfie is excitable when he sees people and he's been a pussycat. It's terrible because he's 10 years old and not a young dog. We've never been apart. He probably thinks I've abandoned him and he's been sent to the kennel. I haven't been allowed to see him and he didn't deserve this. She's had him since he was a little puppy and he's not much bigger now. The lady tells of the forgotten incident in June when a delivery driver who appears to be an ambulance chaser was chased by munchkin of a dog as it escaped from Settimo Bovio. As soon as he saw my dog, he was screaming like a lunatic, shouting, he's killing me. Ambulance chaser. He's, I'm gonna sue, I'm gonna sue. The vicious dog, Alfie. He... Had the man really been afraid and callous, he could have kicked the little dog rather than call the police and have the woman's small pet taken away. If he was that heartless, after all, it's surprising that he did not do both, perhaps. He was screaming so loudly the people came running out because they thought someone was being attacked, she recalls. He fell over on the next door garden and I told him that if he was afraid to just stay still. My neighbor came up and picked up the dog. And keep in mind, I mean, we're talking about the, a tiny dog. The man suffered a scratch that he inflicted upon himself as he cowered on the ground, some reports say floor. Notice that the neighbor simply reached down and scooped the dangerous beast up. The man even lied and said that he was bitten. The coward was taken by neighbors to the hospital after he screamed as if he was dying. The lady who suffers from anxiety is now without her bitty dog. The dangerous dog act is what the police are standing by. They support this in England. To justify this cruel of the seizures, the lady has had the dog since it was only a puppy. This is just another story about how at the end of the day, we do not need ISIS, North Korea, China, or Putin to destroy the morality of the West. We are already doing it ourselves. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Thank you for listening. Please, please donate at thecorrectviews at hotmail.com. Every penny that you give to me, I put into the show. And I would love to have a camera that's not an iPhone so you can actually see that cam. It'd be nice. Thank you, friends. Good night. God bless all of you.